Welcome back to the channel. As promised, video two of the Looking Glass pattern will show you how to create the Queen of Hearts. The Looking Glass elements can be used to create a whole cast of characters, including not only the Queen of Hearts, but the Mad Hatter and also the White Rabbit. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to create the dress from video one. I hope you find inspiration and creativity as a result of using this pattern. Let's go ahead and get started. Now that we've seen how to complete the underdress of the looking glass pattern, we're going to take it to the next element, which is the jacket. You can see it here on the Mad Hatter that the jacket consists of long sleeves with a ruffle, a double tab collar, as well as a peplum skirt. The pattern pieces that are included with our coat are the front of the coat, the back of the coat, and a sleeve, as well as a sleeve ruffle, the front peplum, the back peplum, the upper collar, the queen's collar, which we'll be using for the queen of hearts, and also the collar tab. The first step before we begin to sew is to mark the placement for our darts and then to sew them both in the front section and the back section of the jacket. I am going to be constructing the queen's coat using both black and red as the base fabrics as well as a polyester lining. In order to get the darts marked on the fabric, I'm going to grab a heat erasable marker as well as a white marker to mark on the black fabric. I poked a hole in the apex of the dart and I'm just going to mark through the pattern piece onto the actual fabric. We'll take those pieces over to the sewing machine and get our dart sewn. Remember to leave the threads long enough that you can tie each dart off. I'll take all of the pieces over to the ironing board, tie the darts off, and press the darts. Next, we'll place the back pieces together and sew the center back seam. I'll press the center back seam open, and then we'll sew the front and back together at the shoulder seam. With the shoulder seams pressed open, we'll turn our attention to the sleeves. You'll take the sleeve ruffle and fold it in half lengthwise and give it a press, and then run a gathering stitch along the raw edge. Next, you can take a gathering stitch along the sleeve cap on each side to help ease the sleeve into the armhole opening. Next, we'll grab the sleeve ruffle, pull the gathers, and fit it to the raw edge of the sleeve. With the ruffle sewn in place, we'll take it over to the ironing board and press the seam allowance up. At this stage, we'll pull that gathering stitch that we did at the sleeve cap just to ease the sleeve into the armhole opening. There are no actual gathers in the coat sleeve.
with our sleeves installed into the coat, we can clip and trim in towards that seam allowance. And then if you decide at this point that you'd like to, this is when I would add some trim. With the trim sewn in place, we'll place the jacket right sides together and sew the side seams. After you check both sides, you can clip and trim in towards that seam allowance and turn the coat right side out. With the coat turned and the side seams pressed, we turn our attention to the collar. As you can see right here, I have an upper collar section, the collar tab, and then the queen's collar. On this particular piece, I did add some single-sided fusible interfacing to make sure that the queen's collar does stand up just a little bit. The next couple of steps are gonna be to sew the upper collar center back seams on both pieces, and also to sew both the collar tabs, leaving the notched edge unsewn. Then I'm gonna change my thread just to make sure that it doesn't peek through and sew around the wide edge of the queen's collar, leaving the neck edge open. You'll press the center back seam of the upper collar back and then place the two pieces right sides together and sew around the long end, leaving the neck edge open. Once you have all the collar pieces sewn, you're going to clip in towards the seam allowance and trim it down and turn the pieces right side out, then give them a press. If you're doing a two-tone jacket like I am for the Queen of Hearts, then at this point you're going to decide which portion of the collar you want to show on the exterior part of the garment. In this case, I want the red upper collar to show on the black side of the top as well as the red tab. So I'm going to place these two things right sides together, matching the notches and as indicated on the pattern right here. Then I'm going to base this together with a tab on the top. It'll look just like that. I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm gonna match those uh, notches that you can see both on the upper collar and the tab and baste them together over at the sewing machine. with the upper collar and the tabs sewn together, we're gonna pin this to the jacket with right sides together, matching the center back seam. Once you have everything pinned in place, you do want to confirm that you have an equal distance from the waist edge to the beginning of that tab. If you need to make an adjustment, you're going to want to do that now before you sew the collar in place.
Once you have the collar basted in place, you do want to check both sides to make sure you don't have any unusual uh, tucks or puckers. And although it is just basted, you do just want to check. So from here, because this is the queen's coat, we're going to grab our queen's collar and overlay it above the upper collar, matching the center of the queen's collar to the center back of the jacket and sew it in place. At this stage, you can start to see how our Queen of Hearts coat is coming together. Off camera, I went ahead and constructed the lining for the coat in the exact same steps that I used to create the exterior portion of the garment. I did a couple of variations. So I did turn up the sleeve uh, hem edge a quarter of an inch and give it a press and also turned up the lining edge a quarter of an inch as well. At this stage, we're gonna place the lining to the coat with right sides together and pin it all the way around. And then I'm gonna sew up the front and around the neckline and then we'll get the coat turned right side out. With the lining sewn in place, you're going to check both sides carefully. If everything looks to be good, you can clip and trim in towards that seam allowance, turn the lining to the inside of the garment, and press the neck edge. Here's a quick fit of our coat bodice so far, and I think it's coming together great. There, it is a little bit loose, and I do want you to keep in mind that this is a layered outfit, and it does have to go over the dress with the short puffy sleeves. So since we're satisfied with the way everything's coming together, we'll move on to the next step which will be to create the peplum for the jacket. To do that, we'll sew the center back seam of the two back pieces, and then we'll sew the front peplum pieces to the back at the side seam and get those seams pressed open. Off camera, I constructed the lining to the peplum in exactly the same way. I'm gonna place the two pieces right sides together, matching the seams and sew around the entire hem edge, leaving the waist edge open. After checking both sides, you can trim down that seam allowance, turn the line into the inside of the skirt, and give it a press. With the peplum sewn together, I think at this stage I'm going to add some trim to match the trim that I used on the cuff. This is obviously optional, but once I have that finished, I'm going to run a gathering stitch around the waist edge, and that's going to be just to ease the peplum into the bodice section of the coat. When I added the trim to the peplum of the coat, I did so by uh, graduating the trim in towards the center since the coat does cross over at the front. And I also changed the thread as I changed the colors on the panels of the peplum. I just think it looks a little bit nicer and that's something to consider if you're doing a two-tone garment. So from here, I'm gonna run those gathering stitches as previously indicated at the waist and get the peplum sewn to the actual coat.
Once you have the peplum pinned to the top of the coat, you're going to go ahead and sew that waist seam. Now that we have the seam allowance pressed up and we've checked the coat all the way around and are satisfied with where the seams are hitting, the next step will be to get our needle and thread and attach the lining to the waist seam at the folded edge. So the next two steps to finish our coat is to hand finish the lining of the sleeve to the actual sleeve seam and then to add a couple of snaps to the front as well as some decorative buttons. Once we have that finished, we'll get those final photographs. As you can see from the final photographs, Grace is definitely channeling that Queen of Hearts. By selecting different colors, patterns, and trims, you can easily transform this two-piece ensemble into a variety of characters. By selecting different colors and different fabrics and omitting that Queen's collar and adding a top hat, you can easily create the Mad Hatter. One of the really fun parts about putting this pattern together was finding all the unique and tiny details that created each costume. As always, I appreciate your time and watching. If you have any questions, please list it in the comment section below. I hope the looking glass pattern inspires your own creativity and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.